guys hope you're doing great our today's question is to range some query to the immutable this is an extension to a easy problem called range sum query immutable which i have covered in another video to understand this question and its solution better it's recommended that you watch that one first all right so given a 2d matrix matrix find some of the elements inside the rectangle defined by its upper left corner row 1 column 1 and lower right corner row 2 column 2 so we'll be given two indices right um, and those will be the diagonal points of the rectangle and the rectangle formed by these two points right uh, we need to return the sum of all the elements that lie inside that rectangle right so the above rectangle with the red border is defined by row and column one which is two comma one and four comma three and we have to return the sum of all these elements which is eight okay so we'll be given this kind of a two-dimensional array or a matrix and there will be calls to some region which is a method which will provide the values of row one column one row two column two right and it should return the function should return the sum of all the elements inside the rectangle okay so i hope the question is clear uh, there is also some notes which says that the matrix does not change there are many calls to some region function and you may assume that row one is less than equal to row two and column one is less than equal to column two so um, <clears throat> As we had discussed in the previous video around range sum query immutable, this definitely is a clear example of backtracking coding interview questions. And the reason is that, so we could definitely go ahead with every sum region and traverse the matrix from row one column one to row two column two and keep just adding them to a sum value and that could be the right answer. But it would need us O of M into N time complexity each time some region is called, right? So if you propose the solution, you're definitely going to be asked to improvise it. And the only way to improvise it is to build a structure which we can use in O of N one complexity, time complexity, and derive our result with a very simple math rather than going through the matrix every time some region is called right and for that we'll have to solve many sub problems right to derive the final model which will help us achieve that and that is what we use dynamic programming for so um, that's why i think this is a classic example and a very good way to learn uh, dynamic programming better and it helps us develop an approach that is applied to a large variety of dynamic programming problems so so the approach that we'll be taking here is we'll definitely be creating a DP array, right? Or a matrix, which will be having one extra row and one extra column as compared to the number of columns and rows in matrix, okay? That's because for, for DP of one comma one, we want to store the sum of elements in this particular region. Okay, so we basically, so, so imagine one extra row and extra column here. So the last element will store the sum of all the elements in the array. So what I mean to say is DP of M plus one, N plus one, where M and N are, are the rows and columns in matrix, right? So this extra um, element, uh, and the extra row and column that we'll be adding. So the last element of DP matrix would store the sum of all the elements in the matrix. So if you just move upwards, the matrix goes on shrinking, right? And we store the respective values, okay? So DP stores the sum of the rectangle that is being formed from that there to the start, okay? Uh, and to derive such such a rectangle the sum of elements in such a rectangle all we have to do is that pick the value of dp of row 2 plus 1 column 2 plus 1 and then from that subtract all the redundant parts right which are not a part of this because we have row 1 column 1 and we have got row 2 column 2 
So to understand this better, let's use this um, slide. So this is our matrix, right? Now we have to find this, right? This is what we need to find. So what we need to do is that if we take the sum of all the elements in the yellow rectangle, right? And from it, we subtract all the, the sum of all the elements in the blue rectangle, right? And then from that, we also subtract some of all elements in the purple rectangle, right? So that leaves us with this, right? Our answer. The only thing here is that we subtracted this small rectangle with three and five as the elements twice, because that was a part of the purple and blue rectangles both. And that is why we will add that part after subtracting it from the yellow rectangle so that we get the correct answer, okay? So this is what we'll be doing and let's get started with the solution. So this is a very, very easy implementation. You just need to understand the underlying concept, right? And then it's really easy. Okay, so we'll just declare this outside because we want to use it in both the functions and then initialize it inside here. But before that, let's just do some basic checks that if matrix dot length equals to zero or we don't have um, or matrix of zero dot length equals to zero. So, so in that case, we just want to return because there's nothing that we can do here. Right. So we just return. <clears throat> OK. So the number of rows in matrix, that is matrix dot rows, uh, oh, sorry, matrix dot length. And the number of columns is matrix of zero dot length, right? Let me just close this out. Okay. So, um, Cool, right? So DP would be initialized as, as I was saying, we need one row extra and we need one column extra, right? And that's what we've done, right? Now let's fill this out. So we'll just do a simple matrix traversal. So rows. Plus, and then and j equals to zero, j less than columns, right? And j plus plus. Okay. So now, as I was saying, that the last element in DP, right? So basically, DP of rows plus one, columns plus one will store the sum of all the elements in the matrix, right? So given by that concept, what we do is so we want to use our pre-calculated results for the elements surrounding the element that we are considering right now, okay? So if, if I'm considering, for example, zero, I want to reuse the solution I had, I have built for three, for two, and for six. So if I add the result for three with the result of two, right? I will basically be adding the result for six twice. And so I'll subtract the result for six once, okay? So given by that, what I, and then I'll of course be adding the value of the matrix of I comma J. So first of all, let's start with that. So I add this plus DP, okay? So now I, and j plus one so it basically we are trying to cover like for zero here we are trying to cover three and two okay and similarly i plus one and j okay and then since we have included this 
value twice. So we just say dp of i, oh, sorry, i and j should be subtracted once, right, to get the right answer. Okay. So this is how we just build this up. And now when a sum region function gets called, all we have to do is just return. So we'll be using our dp. And since we know that we have a plus one, like we, we have in the next for rows, uh, for matrix of rows uh, columns, right? We have dp of rows one, rows plus one and columns plus one which is what stores the sum of all elements, still rows and columns. So what we'll do is that we'll use that, okay? Column two, yeah, plus one, right? And then, as I was showing in the presentation, that we need to subtract two rectangles, right? Which would be, so the row remains the same, but the column goes for column one, right? So for example, here, the row, right? The row remains the same, but the column is, this is column one, so we go here. And similarly, we subtract column remains the same. This column remains the same but we go to this row, okay, which is row one, okay? And since we have subtracted this segment twice, so we add that. So we just add dp of rows one, column one, okay? Sorry about that. Row one, okay, I've written rows, row one and column one. And I think I've written rows here as well. So sorry about that. Row two. Okay. Right. So um, we have added that to get the right answer. Okay. So let's see if this works. Mm. Oh, okay. 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 Let's try submitting. Fine. So as you can see, the time complexity for num matrix is O of m into n, right? Space complexity is also O of m into n, but the time complexity of the method which needs us to derive the sum is O of 1 because we just add and subtract a few values and get the answer. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe. Keep coding and take care, guys.